This is well, welcome to a life in balance here. Uh, I have Dr. John Thomas here. We're going to be talking about headaches, headaches. something that a lot of people have. Some people cause people's headaches. But yeah, you know what? When we look at the My research. My wife says I there, cause her headaches. There you go, right? <laughs> I looked at the research and it said 45 million sufferers throughout all the United States. I, I have to think it's more than that. Yeah, no, no, I no, really no. have to think that it's more than that to actually suffer from headaches. That's a day. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> and so, but when you take a look at that, it really is suffering when you have a headache. I mean, we talked about that. When you have a headache, you're not going to be able to work very well. Yeah. You're not going to be able to focus. You're not going to be able to concentrate. It's not a pleasant experience. And and some of these headaches, they last for days. And, and, and God forbid if you have a debilitating headache. Like we had a, a writer for us. He was a great writer. But he had migraines, and he was trying to get rid of them 19 ways from Sunday. He was going to regular medical doctors. He did the Botox. I mean, they didn't. Yeah. They had no effect. No effect. And, and, there's, and, and the thing is, is that we'll talk about that in the show. We'll, we'll get a, an idea of why someone like that has that result and what we can do to change that. Through the and I always thought about I thought that you had systemic problems that you have to deal with before that other piece will go away. Because usually if you have a chronic issue, especially like headaches, it, there's something else going on. Yeah, there's a big red flag there. Yeah. When you start to get regular headaches, you should not be experiencing that. So yeah. when you start getting that, you definitely need to get to someone to check that when out. When I was a much younger man, I used to have um, chronic migraines. I'd get them like twice, three times a month. And what I found was a lot of those were tied to my diet and also mm -hmm. skipping meals. Yes. So those kinds of two things were the biggest triggers. And when I changed all that stuff and started eating more healthy foods, gradually they just went away until they just completely went away. And now I, it's so rare that I get a regular headache, much right. less a migraine. is not even funny. I haven't had a, a regular headache probably in a couple of years. That's beautiful. Uh, and I haven't had, a, I don't remember the last time I had a migraine. I mean, it's probably in the... In the early 90s or something. Yeah, you know, and, and the thing is you have to look and say, okay, now what causes headaches? You know, you just nailed a few things right there. You know, the foods that you eat can cause a headache. Uh, the fact that you're dehydrated can cause a headache as well. Um, you can cause a headache from uh, the lighting that you're in. Yeah. You know, if you're in prolonged... I was exposure. hypoglycemic, so if I didn't eat a certain amount of time, boom. Boom, there you had it right there. It was already right there. Um, you know, you can have it from muscular issues going on in the neck when you, you know, depending on what's going on. And I can on. tell you about that since I'm a computer guy. I'm working on computers. Yep. And my head sticking out like that. <laughs> you know, texting. All the kids yeah. today, yeah, they're texting around. and being on the tablets, that can create headaches as well. Uh, you know, and for athletes, you know, a lot of people get athletic from, from different issues as well. Um, injuries, so maybe? Injuries. Know? Injuries can solve and can cause them too. So there's a plethora of reasons. And so when you go to a practitioner, like when someone comes to my office for for a headache, I really dive in and say, okay, what's the real cause of that headache? Where is it really coming from? So that we can address it. You know, it can even come from, uh, you know, just having different pressures in the head. Sinuses, you know, we know that sinus headaches are a big they can problem have a, thing. A, a chronic sinus infection that they don't know about. Which exactly. Is Allergies can cause them. Yeah. So there's so many different things, and we've got to really look at the person and say, what's going on in this person's life that's creating this Would situation? Would you say that um, most people, when, when you're looking at this headache issue, it's usually have to you have to dig deep to figure out what the problem is. Usually not a one-visit type of thing. It isn't usually. Uh, there are occasions where we do have, you know, if, if it's a structural issue, we can identify that quickly. You know, as like jaw issues. Or jaw jaw issues or even a skeletal misalignment in the, in the neck. Uh, there's a lot of ways we can correct those things really quick. You know, when it gets more difficult, it's if it's a dietary issue or if it's a dehydration problem or those types of things. Then you got to dig deeper and find out what's going on. Uh, but you've got to have your eyes open to that situation. Yeah. You know, and it, it, of course, there's the more ominous things too. You know, stroke, you know, those types of things, and and you've got to be very aware of that. You know, there's some big signs for chiropractors to look for yeah. in those types of things. You know, what's uh, what's amazing to me is, I mean, some people what I they have what I call the tough guy syndrome. They think man through you know, I got a headache. You know, it's nothing. Blah blah blah. You know, I'm gonna deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The reality is, if you have a bad headache, you may be dealing with it, but you're not doing anything else. You're not right. going to be able to work very well. You're not going to be able to play very you know, well. The last you thing you want to do is, car. yeah, you want to go in, you want to go in and be negotiating with yeah. a client, you know, right. and trying to sign on to a great program or something you're trying to sell them, and then you've right. got a headache and you're not on your game and you don't get the sale. Right. You know, that's not a good thing. That's right. that, that that's not manning through anything but a loss. Right. You know. So I always tell people, I mean, if you got a headache, you need to figure out why why you're getting them. And again, people can have 
a variety of different headaches. You can have a tension headache from one thing. Yep. You can have one Circle from not tension. eating. You can have you know dietary headaches. You can have migraines. You can have cluster headaches. You can have there's all types of them that are out there. You, you can get a headache from having the flu or whatever because exactly. it causes you know causes headaches. Um, you know, I like to think that if people would actually think about going to a chiropractor for headaches, which they usually don't. Right. I mean, what what do most people think about when they get a headache? I'm going to go reach for an aspirin or whatever. Tylenol or Motrin yeah. or Advil or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and, and you know, one of the things I always try to teach my patients is whenever you're feeling down and sick like that, headache included, yeah. get into this office. Let me adjust yeah. you. Let me get your body optimized. Let's find out what's going on with the yeah. situation. Chiropractic can be a big benefit when it comes to headaches, especially chronic ones, because we deal with chronic issues and we correct those things. Yeah. And so we can really eliminate, and we have. In our office, we've had a lot of stories where we've actually gone through and, and really addressed individuals that were on medications for chronic migraine headaches. You know, we've gone through the process of identifying you know, their issues. I never really thought about it, but around the time that I started getting chiropractic treatments, is also around the time when my headaches completely sort of went away. So th I'm sure there's some kind of relationship there. I mean, I also changed my diet. And exactly. Things. So I did multiple things. Right. And now the only time I've ever seen a headache is like if I got the flu maybe three years ago. Mm -hmm. I had some headache. I had fever also. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and that's probably because your muscular yeah, structure right. tightened up and you started to get a cervical right. tension headache. But the he that even then, that headache was nothing compared to what I used to get a long, right. long time ago. Exactly. And so we can, we can really do some big things to change how well you are going to adapt to headaches and correct them. Let's talk about some of the different kinds of headaches. So I think a lot of people get tension headaches. So yes. why would they get a tension headache? Tension headaches, uh, they're actually, what they do is there's a positional issue where you have muscle structures that tense up. There's a hypotensity. It's what we call hypertensity. And it pulls. When it pulls, you have misalignments in the spine and you have imbalances. And that, what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of this musculature has a lot to do with how the rest of the skull structure is going to react. And as you shift that, the cranial pressure as they talk starts to shift and you start to get headaches from that type of scenario and just by releasing some of that that stress and uh, eliminating that malposition of the spinal structure reduces the uh, tension of the, the structure of the muscles and everything relaxes and then you, you don't have a headache anymore so tension headaches can come from just a very simple thing from repetitive micro trauma working on a computer uh, to making a sudden movement like that, looking at a car, and, and then you've got a, a reaction to the muscle structure. I know when I'm driving in my car, my biggest issue, I was always I had lack of motion to the left, which is, I would notice it because I'm trying to watch for cars yeah. <laughs> when I'm driving. And that was one of the things that I, I went to your office for to, to get that adjustment. Um, I didn't have any headaches, but again, what's, that's, you know, that motion stiffness that was in there. Exactly. It's probably sort of the thing you're talking about. Does that relate when you're talking about these tension headaches? I've heard people talk about TMJ. I've never had TMJ is another thing because what happens is TMJ, uh, when you have a misalignment in this joint in here, the whole jaw is not working. And that whole structure is muscularly uh, involved. You know, you're moving everything you're doing with talking, eating, swallowing. It all has muscular structure. And when this is out of balance or when it's out of alignment, you can create different tensicities in the muscles spasming and then what happens is you start to have a pain structure come up through and you get a cervical tension headache from and that. TMJ stands for like uh, it's it's actually a mandibular joint okay and that's what it is okay um, let's talk a little bit about migraine so my friend was getting the migraines if when he first started getting them he would take some supplements and they went away and then about a year and a half later they came back and worse Yes. So then he went to see a doctor. Actually, he went to see a chiropractor, and a chiropractor did some stuff, and it, it reduced it some, and then it came back again. And then he tried some different supplements, reduced it again, and then it came back again. And then he did this Botox thing, and it reduced it some, but then it came back again. And it seemed like every time it came back, it got, came back worse. Right. And to me, I always thought, you know, it sounded like you're almost like a kind of toxic body or something that you right. got to detoxify. Man, did you nail that one yeah. because it's really all the things that he did, they helped, but they never solved the problem. And we talk about that and all the things that we talk about on our program here in Life and Balance and in our blog and, and what we do in our practice. It's all about finding the root cause of it. And they just didn't find that root cause. He went through improvement periods, 
but the system issues were still there. And you go back to those types of scenarios of what's going on with the metabolism. What is the toxicity level in the body? Do we have to detoxify? Right. That's a big part of it too. And uh, you've got to make sure you address those issues and understand that. And that's a great story to go through that because there was more steps that could be right. taken for sure. When I, when I got rid of my migraines in the 80s, one of the things I did was I changed my diet. I started taking probiotics. I did a mm -hmm. lot. A lot of the stuff I, I did was I didn't really realize it then, but I was literally detoxifying myself. Yes. So some of the supplements that I was taking were for detoxifying. Yep. Uh, I did them for my liver and so on, and and the problem went away without me because I wasn't addressing my migraines. I was addressing just general health. That's the way I right. look at it. Exactly. I want to do general health things because that's going to have the biggest payback. Exactly, and that's you know, and and uh, the migraine headaches were just unfortunately for you, a check engine light or a red flag to say, hey, there's something going on here systemically that we've got to get corrected. You know, this is a system. And rarely will you ever find it where you can just do one little thing and it's going to correct all the problems. You're going to have to find out what the system issues are and correct those. I remember one of the things that I did, which was the hardest thing at that time, was I, dr I stopped drinking coffee. Oh, goodness. It took me about three or four months, and what I did was I just kept reducing the amount of coffee because the, the biofeedback that I did at the time showed that it would raise my blood pressure like 20 points and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I said, well, I don't need all that. Right. You know, I, I don't need angina for the coffee. <laughs> yes, exactly, right? <laughs> so so after that, I, I switched to green tea. And I was I drank green tea for about 10 years before I ever tried any coffee again. I have drank coffee. I drank a cup today. I mean, when I drink it today, though, I don't. Back then, I used to drink lots of coffee. It's right. like the sailor on the ship where you yep. know, you're drinking one every hour type of thing. I, I don't ever do that anymore because I know I have a sensitivity to coffee. That education that helped me understand that. And that's one of the things that you guys do at your office. You're looking to see what they're doing right, but also what they might be doing wrong. What are the triggers? What are the things that are setting you off for, for those types of things? You know, we've had, you know, with, with chiropractic, I, I have a story of a patient. She had a, a migraine for seven days long. I mean, wow. constant. And she went to an acupuncturist regularly. That was part of her regular health routine is to go to the acupuncture. And the acupuncturist said, hey, look, you've got to go find a doctor that's going to take care of you. You've got to go to a chiropractor. Right. chiropractor's got to see this and help you out because it's not working. You know, what we're doing is helping, but it's not getting a job right. done. Right. And so he sent her to me. And uh, actually that day, one adjustment, the headache was gone. And that was, uh, what, two and a half years ago. And to this day, she hasn't had another one. Wow. And so it's really great to know that we can make those kind of changes. And it was just, it's not a matter of uh, the acupuncture didn't do its job. It was just that the issues that she had uh, were structural. And so we were able to correct that and bam, right away. The migraine went away immediately, but then she, because we've corrected it and maintained that correction, she hasn't had them again. You know, there's a thing where a lot of these people who have headache issues, in many cases, they have these what they call mixed headaches. What do you call it? mixed syndrome headache? Or mixed something? syndrome headaches are kind of a, t a tie in to all that. So when you talk about it, you're going to have, you know, you'll have a cervical tension headache, and then the, the other things are cluster headaches. So the right behind the eye, the cluster headache is famous for being right behind the eye, and so you're mixing the, the symptomology. And, and and again, a mixed symptomology can come from mixed causes. Right. And then and when so you go to the doctor, they say take this. Exactly. You know, you take this, take that, and uh, you're suppressing the issues. Because I remember when I had, that, that, that's what the doctor prescribed, it started with an F, fairly long or something like that, but it, it was a really heavy duty painkiller, mm -hmm. and it, it did work, but the problem is if I didn't have those at one point in time, the problem would come back. I know yeah. we're about uh, halfway into the show. Um, I want to remind the listeners that you can go read the blogs. I mean, there's literally, I don't know, 70 articles, 60, 70 articles mm -hmm. on, the, on the site. They're not sales articles. These are educational articles to teach you about living a healthy life, living a life in balance, in, balance. in essence. Exactly. Um, so the blog's name is Creating a Vibrant, Healthy Life. It's on Blogspot. So you type in Creating a Vibrant, Healthy Life, uh, blogspot.com, which is a blogger blog. You'll love Google if you're out there. Yep. Um, you can also go to uh, Vibrant Life, Vibrant life uh, Center, Center and then click on the blog there and get there yep. that way. Definitely. Um, so today's tip, what are we talking about? You know, today's tip is we're talking about headaches today. And we're talking about, you know, a lot of the headaches that we have today are caused while we're at work and the positions that we're in, the ergonomics of our workstations. And we talk about that. And how can you overcome that? Because a lot of times, I mean, you're going to have to work on a computer. You're going to have right. to be in your job. you got to do that. So how can you combat that? How can you overcome those issues? 
Well, the biggest thing is to get up and move, get up and stretch. You know, open up your arms, you know, open up your traps, make sure that you're getting out there, you're stretching and moving and making sure that your body is not slopped into this position for right. prolonged periods of time. The best thing is, I mean, at least every hour, get up and move. I know I have this the Garmin thing on my hand, and it, every hour it, it buzzes and says, move. Get up, it get says, up, get up. Yep. <laughs> so you'll see me get up, and our restroom is like, you know, 200 steps that way. So yeah. I know because it's counting the steps. <laughs> but here's the key. When you get up and move, leave the phone on the table. Don't get up and move and keep bending over and doing your... <laughs> I, I actually, sometimes when, when I'm climbing the stairs here, I'll see people going down the stairs, you know, typing on their phones. And yes. I'm like, watch out, you don't want it in the wall there. So well, right, like, right. You walk right off the ledge. So And, and it's something that they do constantly. Um, it's almost like people need to have it strapped into their arm. I yeah. Mean, it's sort of crazy. And again, they don't realize that in many cases they're getting a text neck syndrome there is exactly you know <laughs> one of the cool things is there's a there's an organization called straighten up america and you can actually type that into google straighten up america and they have some exercises that take about three minutes and they're great to do every hour and so or you know at least a couple times a day to open up and make sure that you're right. you're you're not putting yourself into that position where you're going to have constant cervical tension headaches and again i mean i'm i'm a techie guy i believe that you know it's really nice to have all these really cool devices but we don't want to you know, get to the point where they they ruin our health. Right. You know, so I've been in the computer field for over 30 years. I mean, when you're typing, you have a tendency to bend over. One of the things that one of the chiropractors early on in my life, he he, he liked to sit on one of those exercise balls. Yes. That's what he did. He yep, would, I love those So too. in his office, he had an exercise ball. That was his chair. Yes. Uh, so he was living, you know, walking the talk. Yep. Uh, and I, at my house, I think we got like three of them. So... I sit in a regular chair, but what I try and do is make sure that I get up like at least every hour. Yep. I mean, I, I, I do a lot of writing, so writing for me is unlike my partner Carl who can knock out a, uh, an article in like an hour. It takes me four, <laughs> okay? So I got to get up and down a bunch of times, and uh, getting up does make a difference. And now it's part of my lifestyle. So the garments, it's time to get up. I get exactly. up, I run over there, go to the restroom, whatever, I come back. And that's the best tip. Get yeah. up, stretch, move. Make sure you're not keeping yourself into a position that's going to create more problems down the road for you. So I know we got about uh, I don't know, 13 minutes or so left. Um, let's talk about how do you diagnose? How do you know which you know what problem that they got? You know, there's some very specific paradigms of when we actually classify types of headaches. You know, the cervical tension, the cluster headache, the migraine headache, and there's different types of migraines as well. And so when we go in there, we'll talk and we'll. we'll the, the best case history is from the patient, finding out exactly what they've experienced, what's going on, and then you've got to go dip, dig, dig deep and find out exactly what is going on in that individual that's creating the headache. Yeah. And we talked about those things a little bit already, you know, what's going on at work? What, is, what type of work do they do? What is the position? What is the ergonomics of their position? Is it physical work? Is it not physical work? Is it mental work? You know, those are all components of the, the story as well. Then you can go in and find out, okay, now what's the, we'll do an examination of the, the patient as far as the, the hard tissue, the skeletal structure. And do you sure ask them, you know, are they taking any supplements? Absolutely. That's a component of it, too. What are you taking for medications? What are you taking for supplements? What's your diet look like? Are you coffee fanatic? You know, do you love to drink coffee morning, noon, and night, three pots a day? Um, you know, all those things are very big components of it. You know, how much water are you drinking? So we can get the complete story because you're never going to want to, you know, headaches, what you don't want to do is what your friend went through, where you do this treatment, do that treatment. And there's improvement, but never really resolution. Right. And we want to make sure we get to resolution. And so we've got to be aware of that. And as you go through the initial exam, you can identify all those different components and start to really rein in what is the real true cause of this problem. You know, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, whatever you want to call it, you know, it really... It covers stuff if you have lots of money, but if you don't have a if you have a regular plan where you're paying in 200, 400, 800 a month or whatever, in most cases it doesn't cover a lot of this stuff. So if you have migraine headaches and everything, in many cases, until you're out of pocket, expense, a big a pile of, pile of money, you that's not covered. Right, that's not covered. Yeah. and that's we can even go to the point where we will do some well, testing the, the, and things the like that. The point I was going to get if you go to a regular doctor. Regular doctor visits $125 to $185 an hour. 
What's a regular chiropractic visit normally cost? You know, it, it really is ranging from what the situation is, but typically, like in our office, you can come in for about $100, you're going to get your first appointment all done. And that's a very fair price, okay. you know, for what we're doing, for sure. Uh, so, and then they can go up from there. It just depends on what, what we're going to be doing. But uh, I know that when I went to your office, I was there a lot longer than most doctors. Like literally, you go in and they sort of kick you out, you know, mm -hmm. once, <laughs> once you're done. Um, so... Give us a couple of ideas of how you would treat some headaches. So you pick pick a headache and how you would treat it. You know, well, cervical tension we talked a lot about. So we, and it's really, I think, one of the more prevalent types of headaches that we all have. It's because of our lifestyles and what we do. And we're going to treat that a couple of different ways. Uh, number one, we're going to definitely do some adjustments and get the skeletal structure corrected. We're going to address soft tissue as well. We're going to go in and really work with the scalene muscles, the trapezius muscles, go through and make sure that the, all the muscle tension that's involved in that area is relieved and whether we have to do like we talked about Grosten technique which is a soft tissue fascia release mm -hmm. or whether we're going to do actually like active release technique where we work right into the belly of the muscle and we get that thing to release and strengthen out and stretch out so we're going to do those types of things to really address that we'll even go into with a lot of my headache patients I'll actually go into what's called a sacral occipital technique and that's where you actually even evaluate the sutures of the skull and make sure that everything's moving appropriately and you can release some of the pressure in there so I'll I'll do that as well. I'll do some different types of pressure points in those types of areas as well to release uh, what's, what can be going on in as far as the tension inside the skull and the skeletal structure. So we'll do that. But then in, in the opposite of that is we'll go through, that's what we're going to do hands-on. Then we're going to look and say, okay, well, what do you do in the hydrate yourself? Let's make sure it's not a dehydration problem. Let's make sure we don't have one in the future. So we'll educate. And that's the other big part of it. Is how can I educate you so that you can stay away from having headaches? through the diet structure like you've been talking about, through hydration, going through that. What do you do in the move, you know, with, in your job? What do you do to make sure you're, you're putting yourself in the right posture? You've got to invest the time to make sure that you're taking care of you so that you have prolonged life. So what happens if you think that they're toxic? I mean, you know, what do you do then? You know, if they're going to be toxic and we think we have some toxins in the way, uh, we'll do some very specific steps. We'll actually look at different blood testing because I have some testing that can identify those types of things and toxicities. And so we'll look at doing that if we have to do that route. Uh, we'll go into some very specific steps of how to detoxify the body. And there's a lot of options out there, but there's some that are very, very effective and very effective quickly. And so we can do those as well, you know, if it's a liver toxicity or if it's a, some type of an intestinal toxicity. Mm -hmm. And we'll identify those things. And by doing that, we can, we can take some great strides in eliminating not only the current scenario that the patient's going through, but how we can eliminate future occurrences. Uh -huh. Um, you know, when you do your exams, I was reading the article that you wrote, and in there, you determine the symptoms, you know, from subligations and all these other different kinds of things. Do you normally do your other kinds of scans, you know, when they're in there for the headache, they came in for a headache, do you do a tight tight Titron, scan? yes, we'll definitely do a titron scan, because it can tell us, the, again, the heart, the, the skeletal structure, what does it look like, what is it telling us? because it's part of the story, and it can tell us where are the inclinations of the problems at. So we can go in and we can start doing some deeper evaluation and finding out what's going on with that, whether it's orthopedic testing, right. whether it's actually palpation type of thing. There's all types of different testing that we can do that will identify and give us an indication of where the problems lie. Yeah, I know that you know a lot of people who are way overweight, so obese people, they generally have a multitude of problems. Yes. So you have this obese person who comes in and they have these headaches. So they're coming to you for a headache issue. Yes. But really you're sort of a lifestyle, let me help you exactly. get healthy right. person. I want to take them from that scenario of having a headache and being in misery and I want to transform them to where they're released from mm -hmm. their headache for sure. But like we talked about before, I love the scenario that, you know, are you really driving your health? Like you, mm. you plan to buy a car, you plan to retire, you do all those things. Are you, are you, are you living a health life where you're driving your car in the rear view and looking in the rear view mirror and mm. swerving once you hit something? That's really what that type of a person is doing. And we've got to shift that paradigm and teach them how to be proactive with their health. Yeah, I remember in the, in the 90s, I had an employee who was a great employee. Uh, but he had health issues. For example, he had psoriatic arthritis, uh, which is a, a systemic mm -hmm. you know, autoimmune system yes. problem. And I, he was taking like five, you know, Advils a Yikes. day. I'm like, yes. I'm like, I, and this is every day for years. And I'm like, I said, you can't do that. Stuff is going to kill you. Yeah. I said, 
I said, you know, there's simple things you can do. You're like, put ginger in your food, cook lots of ginger, yeah. buy ginger. Ginger's cheap. Yeah, aloe. Yeah, there's all kinds. And, and he started doing some of those, but what was weird is he started taking the ginger, and in about a, a month, he went from taking five of those a day the, the to no, like one or it. two. I said, you see that? That's it can make a difference. But the reality is you want to get off of them completely. <laughs> right, exactly. I said, and what you want to do is some kind of find some kind of substitute. I said, and if you, I bet you if you did this a lot, your psoriatic arthritis would diminish also. And he never quite did it because any doctor that he went to, he was, an ex, he was a vet. Okay. So any doctor he went to, they just wanted to prescribe yeah. painkillers and other yeah. pharmaceutical stuff. And, and he never got over it. And one day... He just croaked from a heart attack because he was also overweight. Yeah. So they never tried to address his overall issues, which he had, in uh, my opinion, if you have autoimmune system problems of any kind, you have a toxicity problem somewhere. Yes, you do. Okay. Absolutely. And, and, and if, if he would have addressed that and addressed his weight, he'd probably still be alive today. Yeah, and that's that's what we really got to look at is when, when a patient comes in like that, even though they're presenting with a headache or a neck ache or something right. like that, we've got to really start to approach the person as a whole right. and and guide them you know it can't be uh you, i know you guys don't beat them up and when they no, come in they're, you're there to make them feel as best as possible mm -hmm. and usually the people who jump under the weight loss program is because they see the success of all the other exactly people. it's not <laughs> like i'm pushing them into it right. i'll actually even it, some people they'll come in for their adjustments and they'll ask me about it I'll say look we'll take care of the adjustment and, and let's set up an appointment to talk about right. that i don't want to uh you know in, crowd everything and what we're doing right, today. Don't mix the two. Definitely let's sit down and talk about that because it's something that we could definitely improve here. Yeah, and, and again, uh, the only reason I bring it up is if if you address systemic issues in a person's body, their overall health gets much better. I mean, health is, is a choice. Yes. You know, it's life, a pursuit. Life in balance is means you're pursuing balance. Right. It's not going to just sort of happen. <laughs> right, exactly. You've got to go after it. Right. You're not entitled to it. Right. And uh, it is your greatest asset, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. So I know we only got a few minutes left in the show. Um, I want to remind people that you can get lots of really, really cool information on the blog. You go to Creating a Vibrant, Healthy Life on blogspot.com. You go to uh, vibrantlifehealthcenter.com yep. to, to get more information. Definitely. So plus links to a bunch of stuff, even recipes and all kinds of really good stuff on the, on the site there. Uh, upcoming shows, we'll be talking more about different kinds of chiropractic treatment. Yep, we'll be talking about, um, uh, we'll talk more about Nutramost. We'll have some guests on here that yep. talk about their stories. We actually have some other things too. Some of the other things we highlight in the office, we do some raindrop and aromatherapies. We'll have her come in and talk about and what And that's she's actually doing. a big topic right now because a lot of people are talking about aromatherapies, but there's some some dangers that if they do that stuff wrong in there yes, too. It's not exactly. just it's not just smelly smelly stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know, you gotta do that right too. So we'll have that and then uh, uh, we're gonna have an individual come in and talk to us with uh, about juice plus and talk yeah. to us about those supplements and, and why they're such a good uh, part of your plan. Yeah, and forward. I know that those those products are really good. You wanna give the, the listeners a uh, phone yeah, number? Definitely. Call nine oh four six eight three eight one seven seven. If you're ailing, you know, if you you've got if you're just interested in saying, Hey, I wanna know more about this life and balance, or if you are experiencing headaches or back aches or anything along the way, if you have a health question, make that make that call. Come in and let's let's talk about it. let's because those are all just red flags. They're symptoms. Well, that's about all we have for this week's show. Um, I just wanna remind the listeners that go on to the site. If you got any questions, call the number they have, you know, you can come in and get your consultation for the weight loss if you want to do that. Oh, yeah. Or interview the doctor before you tell them. I guarantee you, you're going to really like these guys. They did one heck of a job for me. Um, so until next time, start creating a vibrant life.